Hi, welcome back to Free Energy Functions in Physical Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. It's very much appreciated. In the last few videos, what we looked at were how to transform um, free energy functions like Gibbs free energy into something we would call the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. And the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation is useful for quantifying the variation of free energy with temperature. So if you know the free energy at one temperature and you want it at a second temperature, you can do look at the solution to the uh, Gibbs-Helmholtz equation and find the free energy change at the second temperature. Well, we have a way to do that. And if we don't want to um, do a lot of um, painstaking math. We want to do it in one step, very similar to what we did in the previous video. We can actually look at how the equilibrium constant varies with temperature, okay? Because obviously if the, if the Gibbs free energy varies with it, then so does the equilibrium constant that goes with the free energy. This relationship is described by something called the Van Hoff equation. And the form of the Van Hoff equation that we're going to use is actually this right here. This is the form of the Van Hoff equation we're going to use. Now, like, like the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation, the Van Hoff equation is a separable ODE, or ordinary differential equation. Here's the reason. The differential here is 1 over T. And, like, and one thing you'll find in sort of advanced physics and chemistry topics, the normal derivatives that you had, okay, where you just had one variable, T, um, x, z, stuff like that in the differential, that, that rule is broken. You can have whole functions inside of there. Likewise, in the numerator, the function we have in, inside the differential is natural log of k. Now, a separable equation is one in which I can have all of one variable inside the differential on one side of the equation and all of the other one on the other one. Okay. And that's exactly what I can do. Notice I have derivative of natural log of k over of 1 over t equals ne negative delta h standard over r. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this like a normal separable equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by d1 over t. Notice that that cancels here, and I get that the derivative of natural, or excuse me, the differential of natural log of k equals negative delta h standard over r times the deriv or differential of 1 over t. Notice that there are no um, ln of k's anywhere, and there's also no 1 over t's anywhere. So I have this separated because, you know, there's nothing actually to separate, really, other than the differential. So when I do this, I'm actually legally permitted to just integrate both differentials, both sides of the equation. Okay, this side, since it's of natural log of k, when I differentiate it, I'm going to, or when I integrate it, I'm going to integrate from natural log of k1 to natural log of k2, fundamental theorem of calculus. On this side, because I do this, I'm going to integrate this from, technically this should be 1 over t1 to 1 over t2, okay, because the, the differential is of 1 over t. So when I do this, this is just fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm going to get ln of k2 minus ln of k1. This is equal to negative delta h standard over r. And I'm going to, I'm going to evaluate this. This is going to be 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. Okay, so this, again, this equation, or I should say this solution to the Van Hoff equation is quantifying the variation of temperature with the equilibrium constant and vice versa. So oftentimes... The equilibrium constant is known at a given temperature. So, in other words, I know the, the initial equilibrium constant, the one that most people would be able to look up, I know that at a given temperature, T1. What if I want to find the equilibrium constant at a different temperature? Well, this equation shows how you would do that. Now, the only thing you would have to know other than that is the equilibrium delta H. The standard enthalpy, you can calculate this using thermodynamic data in the back of your PCHEM textbook. You can also find stuff like this online. You can go to a thermodynamic data website and find this. So this is something that you can calculate. Gas constants known. Um, the temperatures that you, the temperature of the equilibrium constant that you have should be known. 
you can pick any temperature for T2 that you want, and you more or less just solve for the second equilibrium constant. Now, here I've done a little logarithm rule where since k, it's natural log of k2 minus ln of k1, I've grouped these into one natural log where you have k2 over k1. However, this is actually may or may not be the most useful form of this because you're going to have to isolate the second equilibrium constant anyways. So another completely valid way you could keep this equation is just like this. Because if you have it in this form, then if you want k2, then you can actually just add ln of k1 to both sides. And actually, just for um, the sake of d knowing how to do this, let's go ahead and do that to show how you would isolate k2. Well, if I added ln of k1 to both sides, I get ln of k2 is equal to, I'm going to have ln of k1, and that's going to be subtracting delta h standard over r, times 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1, okay, is recall that the inverse of natural log functions are exponential. So I'm going to exponentiate both sides. Let's do that in orange. I'm going to exponentiate both sides of this equation. Now, exponential of the second term right there, you just get exponential of all that. But whenever I do exponential of this natural log, this one goes away. No more natural log. And also this one technically goes away too. So what I'm left with is K2 is equal to, and what I'm actually going to get is K1 times the exponential of negative delta H standard over R times the, the, the 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay. So K1 actually is going to get multiplied by all of this, okay? So hopefully this gave you a sense of how to calculate K2 at a given second temperature, if you know the initial temperature and the equilibrium constant at that temperature. And again, this is called the Van Hoff equation, and the use of it is if you want to look at the equilibrium constant at a temperature that you um, you know, you can't directly measure, okay, very easily. All right? So the variation of, of equilibrium constants with temperature. All right, so that's going to conclude this video. And in another video, we'll look at an example of this with actual numbers so you can get more of a sense of how to do it. Um, after that, what we're going to look at is how you relate Kp and Keq. Okay, we're going to look at how you relate those two quantities in another video. But hopefully that gave you a sense of the variation of equilibrium constants with temperature. See you in the next video.